Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to jump in here, we're gonna get some wiring done on this uh, LS Swap K10. Uh, let me spin you around here, I'm gonna to describe to you what we got going on. We are currently looking at the bulkhead that is on the driver's side inside the motor engine bay. Um, as you can see, I don't have anything plugged up to it right now, it's because I just got done doing all the wiring for underneath my dash. I had just completely stripped. So, we're going to go over what we got planned on. Remember, this is an LS swap, so this is what I'm going to be describing as to how I've got this. Alright, here is your plug that's going to go into the bulkhead. Alright, and what we're messing with is just this, this set of wires right here. We're not messing with none of those over here. Alright guys, so we're back. And this is what we're left with. Uh, sorry the video shut off on you a while ago, but anyhow, uh, what we're doing here is I'm not running my HVAC system uh, because I'm gonna be running a vintage air system later down the road. So that'll take care of all of my heat and my cooling. Uh, but anyhow, I'm gonna show you what wires are left for your LS once you get done deep pinning this uh, block. This is just the harness here that controls uh, your motor and your dash cluster or stuff like that uh, on this portion also these plugs up here these go to your windshield wipers so anyhow we're going to show you real quick your top wire right here you're going to run that to a battery uh, put your fusible link in there that way if something were to happen uh, it's going to pop that fuse before it melts your wire so run that one to the battery your next wire down, get it here, there you go. That wire there is a pink wire, okay? That wire is your old distributor wire. You used to power your distributor. Um, when you're doing the LS swap, you want to run that wire to, uh, whenever you do your standalone harness, or if you have a harness uh, made for you, either way, that is gonna run to the side of the fuse block for your um, LS harness that needs power when the key is turned on. So remember, it's this one, these colors of these wires are gonna be different because the sunlight has faded them, but that is a pink wire. All right, next we're coming down, you'll see the purple wire. Let me get this all unloaded here, sorry. This is your purple wire, all right? That's gonna run all the way over to your starter and you're gonna hook that to the little video prong on the starter so when you turn your key all the way forward to start it the power is going to get sent through that wire to the starter uh, solenoid that engages it beside that you'll see two green wires those green wires are for your temperature sensor um, you're not going to need but one so you can snip one off uh, and you know tape it up or whatever uh, however you feel like disposing the, the single wire but uh, it needs to run to your coolant sensor. That way you'll know what temperature your, uh, your, your motor is uh, by the dash cluster. All right, below the purple wire there, you'll see another big wire. That is another hot wire. You need to also run that to the battery. You can tie it in with the other one, but remember, put a fuse on it so it does not short anything out. And then you, on the, Close to the bottom here, let me see if I can get this out. Close to the bottom here, you'll see you got a tan wire right here. That's gonna go to your oil sending unit. You want that to uh, be able to tell what kind of oil pressure you have on your engine. So run that to your uh, oil sending unit. I'm gonna be running um, a single wire oil sending unit. So make it a lot uh, easier. And then the very bottom wire, you'll see, let me get this brown wire out of the way. See a very bottom wire right there. It's a pink wire. That is going to hook up to your fuel sending unit so you'll know what level your gas tank is at. Uh, so you won't be having to push your LS swap truck. Anyhow, guys, I hope this explains it a little bit. Um, that's how I'm running mine. It's not hard to do. Like I said, uh, I don't think I explained it real good on the first time I've done a video like this, but 
I'm not the best at it, so I just try to give you what I can give you. All right, guys, I want to show you real quick how I got this done. Got a main hot wire running from the battery. Going up to that junction block right there. And you'll see it's got a bunch of wires off of it. Never mind this wire right here that goes through tail lights. But you'll see right there, junction block, all fusible links uh, for everything. Runs over to my bulkhead right there. I will clean all these wires up, but anyhow, that's how it works, guys. All right, guys, so this is what you're gonna do to kind of solve your oil sending unit problem. Uh, you're gonna take the factory one out and this is the oil sending unit that we're gonna use. This is the part number. I got mine from uh, O'Reilly's. Then you're gonna need a brass elbow. You'll see right there. That's the part number that's from uh, Advance Auto. As you can see, it's eighth inch uh, pipe thread. Just a little elbow. Kicks it over 45. Uh, and then you're going to want an adapter that's going to go in the back of your Where the stock oil sending unit goes. This is the adapter kit You can see who makes it. There's the part number right there And the one we're wanting to use is this one right here. It's a m16 by 1.8 So that's what we needed to use You're going to screw this inside of the uh, block first. It's got a little crush washer that comes with it. You'll use it do not use any kind of Teflon tape or anything like that because the oil sending unit uh, needs to be grounded and this is how it grounds itself uh, to the block. Uh, and then you're gonna screw on your 45. Uh, again, don't use no kind of uh, tape or anything on it. And then you're gonna screw your oil sending unit with one wire. I've already got a wire on mine. I've got it heat shrinked. Um, this wire is going to run straight to my oil gauge on my dash. Uh, the reason why you need the elbow is because when you put this on here, this goes down into the block. And if you try to put this on here, this edge right here is going to hit your valley pan bolt. So it's not going to let this screw all the way in. So kick it sideways just a little bit and you'll be able to use it. So let's get this stuff put in and we'll come back. All right, guys. Now the next thing we've got to do is we're going to change out our temperature sensor. Uh, currently, the stock one is a two-wire sensor. Uh, it runs to the ECM, the computer basically, or the PCM, and it tells the computer, you know, what your engine temp is, and then it can be digitally displayed uh, if you go that route. But what we want to do is change this temp sensor out and this pigtail right here uh, for a three-wired sensor with a three-wire pigtail. And what we're using here is, this is a 1998 model uh, Camaro or Firebird. That year specific, because uh, they had a three-wire temp sensor in them. That is your AC Delco part number, 12551708. Uh, it is a three, pronged as you can see let me see there you go it's got three prongs on it uh two of those will wire will go back for your original sensor and one will go straight to your uh your cluster in your dash uh you're also going to need this pigtail here this is from o'reilly's that's the part number uh that's the eight four five nine eight uh it says throttle position sensor socket but Trust me, it's gonna work in this. Uh, it's basically a three wire plug, plugs up into the end of this here. Let me see if I can get this open with one hand. There you go. As you can see, it's got three pins inside of it. And what you're gonna do is the two pins that are up top here, that's gonna go, uh, it'll basically feed the uh, PCM the information the bottom pin that's on the bottom down here that one is going to go straight to your your cluster 
in your dash. So let me show you how you're gonna wire this up real quick because there's a lot of questions. On this one, we got a black wire, a blue wire, and a gray wire. And if you hold this up, you'll see the three prongs right there. You got one on the bottom, two on top. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take your gray wire and it's gonna to go to the tan wire on your harness. All right, and then you have another yellow wire on the other one. That is gonna to go to the black wire. Then this blue wire off of this pigtail, that is gonna be for your gauge cluster. Uh, you run that into your dash. We're gonna tie it into the green wire coming out of your bulkhead. That is for your temperature sensor. So we're gonna run that wire along here and it's gonna tie into that blue wire on this plug. So let me get this all swapped out and we'll come back. Okay, as you can see, we got our green wire going to the blue. We have our tan wire going to the gray. We have our yellow wire going to the black. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll take, although these are uh, weather resistant, uh, heat shrink and soldered, I'm still gonna take me some heat shrink and I'll slide over this whole thing right here, just like that. And I'll heat shrink every bit of that just to clean it up and make it look good. I'll also take some heat shrink right down here at the very end of the butt connector. Uh, heat shrink that, that, the wire, that way the wires stay uh, neatly together. And I'll also do it up close down here to where all three of these wires come together at the harness. Uh, because remember one wire is coming from the bulkhead so it enters the harness so it can complete right through there. Later, uh, you'll see all those wires back there. Every bit of this will get uh, wire loom, so it'll all be cleaned up. But that is exactly how you wire up your pigtail for your uh, three pin Camaro uh, water temp sensor. Next, all we gotta do is basically unscrew the stock two pin uh, water temp sensor and just screw in the other one. So it's just that easy guys. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time guys, God bless you. Have a good one.